I think the most important thing to remember is while yes, it's a creative deal, you're dealing with a bank. So you are not in charge. The underwriter, there you go. There's an appraiser, the, the loan officer, they're in charge. They're going to determine the details and you're going to figure out a creative structure that fits those details. Okay. Anyway, I think I told you before, Caleb, if we paid for that $500 consult, we would have backed away from a deal we lost 17 grand on. Yep. We still have 15K tied up. So it's been a couple of weeks since our last recording and we're catching up. But last time we talked about funding, how not to look like a crazy risky idiot to the banks and to the lenders and all the parties and stuff like that. So we talked about a lot of gotchas on the front end. Like it's too easy to talk about or to talk yourself into a Morby method, but then you don't know how to deliver or you can't fulfill the promises that you made because you were promising generalities or maybe you made specific promises. So busting myths, being prepared, connecting with experts once you actually, it's all about the underwriting. It has to be well underwritten, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be well underwritten to make the deal actually be worth the trouble and the, the aggravation that these deals bring to the table. Cause there's a lot of twists and turns. If it's so not if the sellers, it, if the sellers open to the idea, then good for you. That doesn't mean you have a deal on your hands. They have to be not only open to the idea, but almost like last resort. Right. Or the likelihood of the deal succeeding when it runs into hardship, which it will, the likelihood of it succeeding is is real low. Right. Yeah, you know, we talked day. about that before, right? We talked about how Morby right. method should be the absolute last method. Seller finance, sub two, right. hybrid, cash. If the if everything else doesn't work, then we can talk about Morby method. And that's and Mike Feruzzi. He's still with us. He's 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 working on a project right now. We are investors first, just to be able to do a deal because the novelty doesn't make sense, right? You have a Morby method. If it's not underwritten properly with all the terms, conditions, closing costs, payments that you may or may not be making to the seller, and it doesn't cash flow, or you don't know if it cash flows, just doing it doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, and number so one, we, we, it's we not a good a deal. And, and number two, you're going to spend time, effort, and money mm -hmm. and get to the finish line and it won't close. Because people don't really, again, we're re still rehashing. A lot of times the lenders or the title companies or somebody involved really doesn't take a real close look until you prove that you can get it to the finish line. And so two days before closing, they're like, okay, this is a serious deal. Let me just look. Oh, wait a minute. This is weird. Now, hold on a minute, you guys. I got to have you understand, explain all of this to me. Mm -hmm. And they may back out. You don't control them. It's a subjective decision. So having it well underwritten to make sure it's it's a viable deal is really important because when somebody – determines, I don't like this deal. You need to change it. You need to explain it to me. I'm out. Find someplace else mm -hmm. to go do it. Is your seller still going to be on board? All right. So doing that preparation in any of these deals is, is really, really one of the most important things before you sign paperwork is to make sure the seller is on board with the right motivation, not just making a couple extra bucks, underwriting it to make sure that we are making the right kind of money and then finding the right team that understands the structure and the way that we do it now, obviously, it's a little different than how we completed this. But understanding the structure is really important because we talked about in a number of our other meetings, the people who are the face of the company aren't the people that are actually making the decisions. And they're going to let you know that they could do something that they may or may not be able to actually do because they're in your business. Yep. So to move from there, we we got, what, 75% into the transaction. I was discussing it with, through the last two meetings, and we had a lot of twists and turns. We had a lot of issues with where the money was coming from, how it was being sourced. We had to come that, overcome that and figure out our way forward in that regard. And when the real biggest part of our success came from the fact that we used a title company that was owned by an attorney that had two separate accounts. And for those of you cowboys who think you just unlocked the secret, that's not the, that's not the whole secret. That's one important part of many. And I hate to say this, but it's not like there's a formula to make every one of these work. They they won't all work, number one. And then they, the ones that do work don't work the same. Sometimes you have to join together on an LLC. Sometimes you have to do a second position note. Sometimes you have to cross-collateralize a separate asset. 
if you have your own cash to close instead of bringing in a third-party lender, you're in a way better position, way higher likelihood to succeed because because many reasons. And that how much cash you have available versus how much you can acquire funding for versus how much how fast do you need it back? All these mm-hmm. things factor into how the deal has to get done. And we have to gather all that info on the front end. And so some of you have heard we charge a nice little upfront cost to to validate your deal. And that's the co- that's where we have to ask all those questions. It does cost because it's it's you're doing an, an expert a call with experts who are gathering information to help you still yep. to determine the viability of the deal. Yep. You right. can check all the boxes. We have an onboarding form that says, "Do you have this, 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 this in place?" And if you don't, we're going to charge it. We don't want to take your money on the front end. We want you to go structure a good deal and bring it back. And then even if you structure the good deal, it still needs to pass like real in-depth questions. And if it if that's the case, then number one, you're going to come away informed. But number two, if it's still a good deal at that point, and we feel that we can actually get it done, you're equipped to go to move forward. I think the most important thing to remember is while yes, it's a creative deal, you're dealing with a bank. So f- you are not in charge. The underwriter, there you go. There's an appraiser, the, the loan officer, they're in charge. They're going to determine the details and you're going to figure out a creative structure that fits those details. They're the yeah. keeper of the gate. Which reminds me of of many conversations I've had. People talk about how do you make the insurance do that? You don't make the insurance do anything. You focus on the outcome. I need this to happen. How do I play by your rules? That's the question. How do I play by your rules to accomplish this objective? Mm -hmm. How do we use the rules and the structure that is presented to us from these third parties and mold them into something that is legal, binding, and available for us to have a creative solution? So that's reading the, the docs most fun part about these things, reading the docs is important. I know plenty of coordinators who are just coordinators and that's fine. They don't read the docs, but that's mm-hmm. a coordinator's job versus a, a transaction manager or a consultant. And that's, that's our team is managers and consultants. We project manage each deal. We consult on each deal. And There's the a lot that goes into successful it. recipe here from how we were able to complete this deal. It started with motivation and cash flow, right? It was a good investment at the end of it. Although we we thought we were getting a different deal, we spoke in the first one that it, it probably wasn't the best one to start a more beyond. It wasn't the yeah, you guys most. admitted you were chasing. Yeah, that we were chasing it. It does have a, a crazy potential for cash flow. Okay. After, but it comes with a lot of work, right? Yeah, so, at what expense, right? There's a lot of skin in your teeth, little just mm-hmm. got by issues, right? You got by the underwriting, you got by the lending. The seller was in a position where they're like, okay, we'll adjust <laughs> the terms and price or whatever needs to be adjusted in order to accomplish the outcome because they were back up against the wall and you were the, the solution. Yeah. To get to that productive outcome was underwriting first, correct motivation, to the table, we had the right team. We found the right team. It took a couple of different title companies to get there. And we found a, a title company that was comfortable with holding back and picking those funds out to a different account that was able to disperse them the way that we agreed to. This was a, a pretty big deal for us because it was 60% down to the seller. 40% was coming back. And we only had to bring 70% to the table. I'm sorry, 30% to the table. We were So that extra 10% was going to help us with closing costs, repairs, everything else. And to lose that potential, which was on the table, it was about to get lost because we didn't have the right team. And we were, that, that would have put us in a really bad spot. The most important piece of all of this was that we, we found a way forward using direct access to the seller because at the i don't know if you remember during our first two wholesaler was in the way there was a wholesaler in the way there was an issue with access there was an issue with the information being passed through and not being translated appropriately to what the actual deal should have been or what we were expecting we were able to get it done finally with that access with the seller upfront honest communication about what's going on and they felt very, very excited to move forward because they needed the deal, but also they felt 10 times more comfortable because we weren't 
a dog and pony show where we were trying to show them this shiny object and what was sign over here, we were actually upfront and honest with exactly what we were doing, which the wholesaler was not. So I would say the, the key components to our success was that motivation and that direct access. If you're doing this through a realtor, if you're doing it through a wholesaler, good luck. You're going to have a really hard time because they're not going to explain the deal like the way that you need to explain to them. It's a, it's a game of telephone and an unsuccessful one at that. And that's what you're doing with the with a title company, with a realtor on your side, with a realtor on the other side, and then going to the seller. Cut to directly through and talk directly to the seller, and you're going to have some success. With no. you, you were able to get through all of that crap, and finally you got direct connection with a seller, and that's really where the deal came to fruition. So with that... I want to make a comment on that. Go ahead. The the reason we got direct contact to the seller was the wholesaler got so frustrated at the amount of work they had to do on this deal. <laughs> That's a we good told point. them that we told them that this is not your traditional deal. We need to talk to the seller. They wouldn't let us. And then literally I have an email that it was so frustrated. Mike Fruzzi and his team, they can handle the rest. Leave us out of it. Here's the seller. I have a number. comment on that too. How much were they supposed to get paid, Mike? $75,000. Initially, it was one fifty, but we got it down to seventy. That's it's It's incredible the amount of energy and effort these wholesalers who are making a ton of money want to put into these deals. Because that's, I mean, I was a realtor for 10 years and we've fought with other realtors who are like, this is just not working the way that we thought it would. The blah, blah, blah is not working out. It's This isn't traditional. This is so much work and they're not willing to put that time, energy and effort in to represent the people that they're representing, but also to make the money that they're going to make, which is a decent amount of money for $75,000. I would have literally cut everyone out of that deal to make sure it got to the table. That's life-changing money. Yeah. In my opinion, I wouldn't have handed it off to anyone else in that fate, but to that point, if you care about the deal enough to make this work for you, if you care about the deal enough that you think this deal is going to, to not just change your life, but would be a perfect addition to your portfolio, why are you putting it in someone else's hands? Yeah, why hire us? Let it go. Why, why are you putting it into somebody who doesn't <laughs> care about your deal? Yeah. Someone who you have to go through to get access to. Well, to, and to that point, so why would you hand it to anybody else? And why would you hand it to us? Here's my thought, Caleb. They're not handing the deal over. They're creating a partner. Okay. So the so, difference as the, the way we do things, what's different, you, you, we don't want you to hand the deal off to somebody else. We don't want to be the person who's handed off the deal. Or mm -hmm. it's like, do we get a one-star review or a five-star review based on our effort involved? We're partnering on these deals. That's the difference. Now, the only time it's transactional is on the front end. You're going to fill out a survey, a, a, a little questionnaire, so we can help you qualify the deal. That's no cost, no obligation. And once you pass that point, let's get to the point where we have that dedicated call. And that's the only transactional point. We're going to charge you up front for a one-hour chat, deep dive into your deal, which mm -hmm. basically turns into a personal training session, whether or not you have a deal. And so we've had people walk away from, well, that's definitely not a deal, but I learned so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we get the five-star review based on that, even though they spent money and they didn't have a deal come out of it. That's the only transactional part. After that, we're, if we're taking the deal on, it's because we're being partners. And so we have a vested interest in success just like you, and you're not handing it off to anybody. Yeah, and like any other partner that you're bringing to the table, they have to understand what rules you're playing by. They have to understand the deal structure to make sure they feel comfortable moving into it. They have to understand what kind of terms and conditions you've laid out with the seller to make sure it's something worth it. So all of that work has to be done, whether you're hiring somebody or JVing with somebody. The only difference is, is that there is a little fee to help us get started and move forward. So our time, energy, and effort is working with you turns into something that both of us can feel mutually beneficial on. And its success wasn't necessarily that we were cash flowing day one. Its success was that we were able to get through all the obstacles to have a piece of, of real estate that's going to perform after we do all the work and energy and effort to it at a higher level than what we could have done just doing something sub two or seller finance anywhere else.
because the, any other deal that we had at the table at the time was small single family homes or duplexes. This has the potential for cash flow of $6,000 plus, which is great. The best part of this successful transaction was that we were able to build trust. And that's what us as transaction consultants would do with anybody that's part of that transaction is building trust because we're not putting our foot in our mouth under over promising and under delivering. We're building this relationship with everybody because it's going to be something that's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot of energy and effort. And we're not just sitting here pushing paper and, and moving things along. Right. Yeah, there's the difference. And I had this chat with somebody else on the team. There's a difference between transaction uh, coordination, transaction management, and consulting. There's like, that's the three different tiers mm -hmm. and the, well, and partnering, right? So the, the first three coordination management and consulting, those are arm's length, right? We're working with you. We're helping you accomplish your goals at a, at a distance from, from a slight distance. We know all the things we consult, we coordinate parties. We're bringing the paperwork. We do all the things and connect and, and help mm -hmm. the deal succeed, but it's your deal. And then partnering and JVing those sorts of things is where, okay, now it's ours. And so we will do a little bit of fighting for you or on your behalf, et cetera, as part of regular transaction management. But at a certain point it gets to these parties aren't cooperating. Here's what I need in order to move forward. I need A, B, and C. I've emailed, called, texted repeatedly for the last three days. Can't get it out of them. I need you to go get it. Sometimes it goes back to our client. You built a relationship. I need you to leverage your relationship to, to get this thing so that we can take it to the finish line or it won't work. Whereas when we partner, there's no limit at that. There's not a limit to that point. It's like, no, we have to go get it. And we're going to call people. We're going to send notices. Mm -hmm get attorneys involved if we have to that's the the partnership level yeah and it's 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 something that's really important to have people that are fighting with you and that seems to be the issue with most realtors and wholesalers that don't understand the structure of these deals and don't understand what you're trying to do because they don't understand it's scary to them to advocate for a solution so they end up being somebody who gets in your way and, and is more of a, an obstacle than someone who's trying to finish it out with you. All right. That's so in, experience. let's summarize this. We've gone over the obstacles. we talked about the difference between partners and arm's length consultants and all the, all the different parts and pieces. There's real skin in the game. It really matters how you get into the deal, how you execute the, the closing because the end only happens after all the rest of the stuff. Now you've closed the transaction successfully and you scooted by lots of, lots of really tight things. You scooted just by and you got the deal done. Now is it, it's, how long ago was that? And is it successful? Give us a, a quick recap of how the deal looks now. Yeah, the deal was successful. The deal was feels good. We're doing a lot of work with the money that we were able to receive from the back end to it to start transitioning this into a performing property. It was what? January 6th. It was nine buildings, 18 units total with various triplex, a quadplex, a fiveplex, some duplexes. It was a portfolio. Yeah. Portfolio. And we had to evict some tenants. We have to do some work. We got to find new tenants. It was definitely an undertaking, but as Nick said, the potential there is huge. So yeah, the, the proper motivation from the seller that allows these deals to happen. She didn't want to do all the updating. She just wanted to let it go. So we had a lot of value add there and the money. And she had two major things coming due that she couldn't afford. Right. Yeah. So the, the money from the Morby method that we received back to us helped us you know, renovate two two of the apartments i think it was mm -hmm. now were you were you planning on being zero out of pocket or what where was the reconciliation for that and you're not zero out of pocket anymore we are not zero out of pocket anymore we are planning on being zero out of pocket if we dug deeper understood had someone walk like we discussed before um we probably would have negotiated a much bigger leverage on the back end, if that makes sense. We would have had a bigger gap you know, to come in zero out of pocket. We were 
compensated so somebody... for everything we put into it at, during the transaction, but now we're coming out of pocket for some of the renovations that we didn't realize. Okay. Were... So somebody planning on a Morby method, and if its success hinges on them being zero out of pocket, not a good idea. I would say it, it's a nice it's a strategy for somebody that has all the information they need. If you are coming in guns blazing, oh, this person just needs 20% down, I'm going to just go for 30%. Like any transaction you're doing, whether it's Morby, creative, seller financing, sub two, whatever, if you don't understand what you need to do after it becomes yours, then you don't really have a strategy up front because you make all your money at the beginning, right? If I'm doing this- Make your money on the buy. If I'm, if I'm in a position where I'm going to go through this transaction again, with the same sellers, same implementations, there would be a lot of things that would have changed, right? We would have okay. done a lot more deep dive into uh, making sure the properties are good. And if we figured out what money we would need to operate it on the back end, the deal would have been completely different. And also ours was a value add portfolio. So somebody else's property might not need to evict two tenants and renovate those apartments. Right. Um, we would have understanding those costs is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have been very close to zero out of pocket if we didn't have to do that, which was the, I don't know if they just didn't like new ownership or what it was. They paid the previous landlord every month and then we bought the property and they were basically like, yeah, we're not paying you rent. So <laughs> unexpected things are happening. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, your underwriting needs to factor for carrying costs like that. You need initial mm -hmm. reserves. You can't take over a big property with zero cash and zero reserves. You yeah. just can't do that. There's going to be a roof or a water heater or a tenant that stops paying or some stupid thing you didn't notice on a big deal. You can't take over a big property with zero cash reserves. And that's not specific to Morby. That's just investment 101, right? Yeah. If you're not factoring in reserves, if you're not factoring in vacancy, if you're not factoring in certain things that you know will help you be successful to raise the right amount of money or negotiate the right deal, your, your struggles are going to be there once you and become the and we find people that are excited about the Morby method, but that don't even know that basic thing. Like, no, you can't, this is irresponsible and foolish. And now you're asking not only a bank to finance you, but also the seller to finance you back. How, this is how you can be a good buyer, a good borrower. Right. And moving into that space as a good buyer, a good borrower or anything else, like your, your reputation is really important in any community, right? Whether it's a small community or a bigger community in sub two, obviously we've all seen some of the posts that have been happening lately. And a lot of that comes down to homework, right? How much have you really invested in learning about the property? How much have you really invested into learning and understanding the market with your exit strategy? And for every deal, it's specifically creative or Morby, right? If you don't have two or three different exit strategies, we like to do three. What are you doing? We we know people that come up to us all the time. They're like, I'm going to sub to this property. It does not cash flow long term. It does not cash flow as a midterm rental, but it will be a pretty cool short term rental. And it's like, what happens if the market crashes and no one wants to rent your property? What are you going to do next? And short term rentals have sagged over the last year. What what hope can we give people? That these deals could be really fun and exciting if you do the right proper energy and effort at the beginning. And if they're taking over at the beginning in the right format, with the right structure, with the right team involved, they don't have to go as crazy and as, as, as roller coaster, windy, turny, twisty as our deal that we just explained to you did. You know, like we it. learned a lot about the stuff afterwards. If we knew about it beforehand, there would have been a lot more energy and effort to realize what's going on and how to make this work easily. Yeah. Yeah, you'll definitely learn a lot, whether you're learning it as you go or afterward. But I think we've we've had the, the blessing of learning a lot of opportunities, not only from working several of our own deals, but also other people engaging with us and us working theirs. Yeah. And that's where our cumulative experience and having these conversations really how many people are doing after action reviews like we do i don't know but we're building that expertise that i don't think you can find anywhere else at this point yeah failing forward is a lot of fun but it could be really expensive with morby yeah really expensive with morby that's but it anyway, thank you.
told you before, Caleb, if we paid for that $500 consult, we would have backed away from a deal we lost 17 grand on. Yep. We still have 15K tied up with one of our other Mormon methods because the seller Which, feels like he's due a certain amount of money out of it. Yeah. The seller canceled and he wants to keep the EMD. You got to love New York. So yeah, it's tied up until mutual. It can be tied up indefinitely for who knows how long. So yeah. uh, that right there, it, it, it speaks for itself. Cool. Thank you, Caleb. Yep. We'll see you guys.